We're going to use Euler's method to approximate a, a value when we're given a logistic differential equation that models the rate of change. You can see right there I gave, I gave an example. dp dt is equal to 0.264 times p uh, times the quantity 1 minus p divided by 200. <clears throat> so this says that the rate of change is directly proportional to both the population and how far the population is from the carrying capacity, which is 200 in there. So to use Euler's method, we're going to start out with just a little bit of math. So let's have some room for some scratch work, our calculator, and then we'll look at this problem right here. Now to use Euler's method, all you really need to know is the point-slope form of the equation of a line. Let's all write that down. If you wrote something like this down, that looks good. Um, but you know, you might have written it down, y1 minus y2 is m times x1 minus x2. You know, it doesn't matter as long as our points are, you know, they're arbitrarily labeled so they're different. In fact, I don't need 1 and a 2. I could use a 0 and a 1 if I wanted to. And actually, that's kind of a nice form right here. So this is a point-slope form of the equation on the line. And, uh, well, what we could do is we could say this is our start x value and this is our start y value, right? That's as easy as that. But you notice that this Leibniz notation for our rate of change of p with respect to t, well that's just the slope, right? That's the slope. And we're already given that. Uh, so what I'm going to think of with the slope, now of course um, kind of general term so it matches the y's and x's that I have here. I'll just write dy dx. That's our slope. And we're given that differential equation here. I use, of course, p and t just for a fun example. But, you know, we could also declare that as some function of x and y, like so. Just show a couple different notations. And as I look at this, uh, if x naught is my start x value, what I could do then is I could say, well, the next x value that I'm going to see then, I'll just go x subscript 1, which is right here, it's going to be h units from x naught. So I'll just write something like this. So when I look at this equation here and I solve it for h, uh, that's actually what this is right here, h and we call that our step size, like that, step size. So what we do is we know x1 is the start plus h, and what we have to do now is we have to take this, and well, let's just do a little um, solving for this y1. So I'm going to do that right here. I'll just squeeze it in. Um, y1 is equal to m, which is our f of x, y, right, times our h plus y naught, like this. <clears throat> oh man, that was actually pretty easy. So now all we have to do is get that in the calculator. Let's go see how easy that'll be. So I'm going to use this example problem right here where the start will be 0 for the x and then 25 for the y. We're going to use Euler's method and approximate p of 5. I didn't include here what the step size should be, so let's start with step size 1. I'm going to use h equals 1. Now, since I'm going to use this example, dp, dt, I'm just going to change it to the language so it matches this, just for our convenience. So I've written dy, dx instead of dp, dt. And then I've got 0 0.264 times p, which is now y, 1 minus y over 200. There we go. Now what I want to do, so that I can make this easy for myself in the calculator, I'm going to put this in to y1 in the calculator, y1. That'll be the graphing part of our calculator. So step one. Step one, put the differential equation in y1. Let's go do that.
you'll notice I push the alpha Y button and then I'll go uh, parentheses uh, Y divided by 200 here we go so in the differential equation goes now we're not going to hit graph we're just going to store it here for our convenience second quit takes us to the home screen. Now one of the things that we'd like to do is we'd like to store our first value of x. So I'm just going to make a note x not equals 0, y not equals. Now what I'm doing is I'm just looking right over there. p of 0 is 25. Like that. And our step size is 1. I added that to that sheet too. We're going to use step size of 1. So we have to tell the calculator this. So this is easy as well because we can do this all on one statement. Uh, we can say uh, 0 store to x. And then I'm going to use a colon so I can put all of this on one line. There's the colon right there. So then I can write some more stuff. 0 stored y and 25 is, I'm sorry, 0 stored x, 25 is stored y. Here we go. And let's get another colon in there because we'll store h also. h, uh, oops, I want the number. 1 is stored as h. Here we go. That looks better. All right, so it tells us that h is 1. Now for the next line of command, what we're going to do here is we're going to put in um, Euler's formula. And so we're going to have to talk about what's the next x and what's the next y. It doesn't matter what order we do this in, but I'm gonna, I'll just use this one first. So I'm going to say x then plus h is going to be stored to the new x. I'm going to put a colon in there, and I'm going to say what the y value is going to be, and that's going to be this one here, where remember this is in y1, so we just have to say y1 times h plus y will be stored to the new y. Well, we could put it in a different order if we want. Let's get that in there. All right, so let's talk about um, h times y1 plus y. I'll, I think I'll just type it in as y plus h times, now here's a shortcut to your y1. Remember that's where we have it stored. That's the F4 button. And this will be stored to y. Like that. And another colon. Because what I'd like to do now is I'd like to show what this is. So I'll use the little curly braces. If you haven't used these before, these come in pretty handy. And I'm just going to use x and then comma y. Seal up that little curly brace right here. And I'm going to hit enter. And so this is using Euler's method. It went from 0 over to 1, and from the y, what it had calculated, it now found the new y. And I'll just hit Enter again. And then there's x equals 2, 3. Remember, we're looking for p of 5. p of 5, that was our objective here. So we're getting closer to it. One more, and we've got p of 5. That's it.